Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about an introduction to the business cycle. So guys in this video we're going to look at the idea of a business cycle and a business cycle is a basic concept in macroeconomics which tries to explain how output in the economy falls at some times and increases at others. So how it fluctuates or how it cycles over time. And in order to explain this, we're going to first start off with a definition. The definition of our business cycle is short run fluctuations in economic activity. And by this we mean gross domestic product or output in the economy over time indicating cyclical periods of downturns and upturns so output in the economy increasing and decreasing over time now the easiest way to show this is through a business cycle graph and on this graph as we can see on the video here we have years along the x-axis or the horizontal axis and we're going to call this axis time in a second and up on the y-axis we have growth in gdp in percentage terms so this is growth in the output level of an economy with years or time put down here on the x-axis and what a business cycle does is it tracks out growth in a business cycle or growth in output over time. Sometimes we see in a country a peak in the GDP output and this would be a peak or the highest point of GDP output growth in the economy and sometimes we see the lowest point in that graph and that is a trough. So the lowest point is the lowest point of GDP output growth in this. So we call this a trough. Now, moving from a peak, the highest point down to a trough, uh, we see a contractionary period. So this is when output begins to fall, maybe due to a contraction in consumption expenditure or investments or inventories going too high. Whereas, if we look on the right-hand side, what we see is moving from a trough to a peak, we have an expanding economy, more spending, more investment, more government spending in the economy. So a growing economy is an expansionary economy. If we want to link all these points together, what we can do is we can get a trend line or an average line going through them. This line shows the average output growth in the economy over time and allows us to break up our business cycle into periods of high growth indicated in the video here and low growth, which we'll see in a minute's time. So high growth here we refer to as an inflationary gap. And this is when output growth is above the trend line or above average. So this is when the economy tends to overheat, inflate, prices increase due to extra spending in the economy. And we have two periods of an inflation gap indicated on our business cycle here. At the opposite extreme, when we see output growth fall below the trend line, what we tend to find is we have what's called a recessionary gap. A recessionary gap is when spending decreases below the average, economic activity falls. We may drop into the more technical term of a recession in this case where spending is quite low and prices start to fall. And again, as indicated on our graph, we have two periods of a recessionary gap on this business cycle here. In the second part of the video, we are going to concentrate on the causes of a business cycle, the causes of fluctuations and the policy implications of these. Okay, so the first cause of a business cycle in our case is household decision making. So these are the decisions on a microeconomic level by individual households that may affect the economy. The first thing that may affect an individual household might be the wage level. So how much is being earned in that household and that will determine how much they can spend. A second factor might be interest rates. If this house is taken on a mortgage, if interest rates goes up, it will reduce their expenditure. And taxes, if income tax, for example, increases, this could affect the household spending decision. And all of these affect the business cycle. The second cause that we're going to concentrate on 
is firm level decision making. So firms also make decisions on whether to spend or not in the economy, their cost structure and so on. So the factors here might include productivity, whereby we look at decisions whether to invest in research and development, for example. There are other drivers of it, such as the cost level, whether costs are increasing in the economy, and this might force firms to go out of business, reduce economic activity, maybe their inventories are increasing, and if they cut back on investment levels, or maybe demand has dropped, and if demand drops, they may have to reduce output and reduce their workforce as well. So all these factors will affect our business cycle and the fluctuations. The third cause of fluctuations in the economy are external forces. So these may include, as shown in the video here, a tornado, a, a natural event coming to bear on the economy, maybe an earthquake, maybe a tsunami. And these kind of external events can have a large once-off short-term impact on the economy, or maybe longer term if we think of things such as climate change. And these will have a large impact on business cycles over time. The fourth factor that we're going to look at is probably the most fundamental factor that we'll look at over the course of the remaining videos. And this is government policy. And government policy can take two forces. One can be on the right hand side, we're looking at the government as a direct spender in the economy. So spending levels of a government on hospitals, on roads, on education and so on. But also, Indirectly, we can look at it in terms of taxes, so income taxes on individuals or indirect taxes such as value-added tax on goods and services. These all impact on the business cycle. On the left-hand side, we see the central bank and we talk about interest rates in the future and how interest rates can affect the business cycle and how these can Im uh, impact on inflation levels as well and the price level in the economy, thereby impacting on the business cycle. The final cause then that we will highlight right now is probably the, the most difficult one for economists to capture, which is confidence and expectations, what Keynes would call animal spirits. And if we see an economy expectations uh, being quite high, what we tend to have maybe is an asset bubble where people are borrowing and spending on cars and on houses and so on, and we see economic activity rise substantially in that case. However, there are other periods of time whereby confidence and expectations are quite low, and this may happen following, for example, an asset bubble where that bursts and you have wealth and asset prices declining, you have people getting poorer in real terms and this happened in 2008 for example following the financial crisis and in this case we have spending levels falling we so we have low confidence and we have a decrease in our business cycle so confidence and expectations being either high or low can determine the business cycle itself Okay, so when we have this, we do have some policy options that we can bring to bear on these fluctuations. One of which is fiscal policy, which is led by the government, which can control taxes and spending. And the other one is monetary policy, which uh, concerns the central bank and their influence on interest rates. So we'll take an example here. And what we will look at is what the government should do in the event of, for example, an inflationary gap in the economy, where inflation starts to rise, price levels start to rise. The government, in terms of monetary and fiscal policy, can do one of the two things. They can go with a pro-cyclical policy. Now this is an inflationary gap so pro-cyclical policy would involve extra spending, reducing taxes, and from the central bank perspective, reducing interest rates, all of which would stimulate the economy even further, leading to an even higher uh, inflation gap. The other opportunity is to go with a counter-cyclical policy. This would be to reduce spending from government perspective, increase taxes, and increase interest rates. All of this would deflate the economy, reducing that inflation gap. 
So we call this counter-cyclical. And this is a way of healing the economy, of reducing that inflationary period and that inflationary gap. Of course, that's not the only gap that we have in a business cycle. We could also have a recessionary gap, in which case the two options are there again. With a recessionary gap, a government can go with a pro-cyclical policy, which for a recessionary gap would be reducing spending, increasing tax levels and increasing interest rates. This would be pro-cyclical. It would reduce spending in the economy. And some people would call this austerity policy. So austerity during a recessionary gap. The alternative is counter-cyclical, which would be government increasing expenditure, reducing taxes to stimulate the economy, and for interest rates to be reduced as well. In this case, spending would increase and it would hopefully reduce that recessionary gap. So most economists overall would tend to look for counter-cyclical policies to reduce these fluctuations in the business cycle. And that's how a government should manage the economy. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.